Welcome to Map Analysis for Hedgehogs. So, Mavablock and me are going to do a three-part series on a Trojan. And um, today's video is just the unpacking process. So you have the whole program from unpacking to basic analysis to advanced analysis stage. And um, you might, uh, if you are not interested in the unpacking, just skip this step and look into the video that Mavi Blocker will be posting. As soon as it's uh, online, I will post a link into the description of the video below. So, all right, um, that's our sample right here. And um, one of the first things you should do is always look into a hex editor, look into strings, whatever, whatever. Um, these uh, basic parts will be done by Mavi Blocker. But uh, I already figured out it's packed. How did I do that? So, okay. Now that's, um, I will be checking the PE format with Podix Analyzer. And uh, it also creates a visualization, which is usually a very good hint if the file is packed. And in this case, I would say it's a good chance there that it's packed, seeing that this area is very bright right here, meaning this is probably a packed area. Um, and you also see that this uh, is in the same area as the resources are. So it's likely that the um, packer stuff just put the packed part into its own resources and um, put it here. Now, there are a few strings. These uh, readable strings are marked blue in this area, in this uh, most leftmost image. So we should take a look into those. Um, this part is the imports, and this part might be interesting strings um, also here, but um, these strings are part of the resources. Most of the time, if strings are part of the resources, they are the manifest. So manifest info. So that's what I would do. Uh, check out the strings or just look into the hex editor. There you can see the strings as well, depending how large the file is. And um, so this is a quite, it's a bit larger, this file. Um, we see here are the imports, so there were some readable strings above that, and these are kind of, it's not interesting for us, so it's just language dependent stuff, so not really interesting, and uh, the strings below that. These are part of the resources and they are just random strings. They, as soon as I see strings like these, I would also assume it's a packer. Like they are pretty typical for certain packers that produce strings. So, um, but they don't make any sense. They are just garbage, random strings. And, yeah, that's also a sign that this is packed, just to confuse you. And um, if we look at this, of the PE format, I don't see anything suspicious right away. Like I'm, I'm looking for sections that are executable and readable and writable. This is not the case for any of them, but it doesn't have to be. These are just um, rules of sump. Um, the entropy is pretty high on the resources section, which we already figured out by looking at the at the visualization. So eight is the most the um, uppermost value that's possible and it's 7.88 so let's take a look at the rest we have quite a lot of imports but packers may also have an import table that's just made up um, that where they don't use any of those or where they also use dynamic loading of the functions 
for the, let's say for the important functions that are so beautiful packers just to obscure that this is packed so um so not much right here it's um the PID signatures Microsoft Visual C++ so it's probably a native application and here it says there are two functions typical for code injection load library A and virtual alloc so hmm, that's not much it's probably just um, like uh, for, po for code injection um, the telltale sign would be a certain combination of functions and you can look those up right here. Uh, this, this is a graph that I made to, um, have an overview for code process injection, um, ways. And like you have certain, uh, combinations of API functions that are together that, that will make up the process injection. So in this case, it said load library A. Okay, there's some, the, the execution step kind of missing. And, um, load library is also used for, um, legitimate stuff. So let's not forget that. Okay. Uh, we can look at this in hybrid analysis. That's always quite, um, help in the beginning if you, use an automated analysis system just to get an idea what this is doing and where you where you should proceed now here it says it drops executive files okay interesting and uh, contacts a server that's something we should keep in mind so it contacts something and we see here it starts several processes uh, one of them being the own sample. So why would they do this? Usually it's a sign that this is a run PE technique. It will run its own process in create the own process again in suspended mode and then inject its own code and then resume this. And then it starts skype.exe. So these are different files or different, uh, yeah could be a drop file if this is a trojan dropper but it could also be a copy of itself how do you check that you use the hash um, you see this is the hash of the sample and down below is a list of the drop files and there you see the uh, file location and also the hash and that's the same so this is not a trojan dropper it's just a part of the part of the persistence routine that it copies itself onto a certain location and then um, starts itself again so that's also quite typical just um, so the malware has only a certain location where it will do its stuff and here you also see the strings that are so weird and kind of random randomly created yeah it contacts um a server in france all right uh okay now here in on clicking on the processes right here you can take a look at the api calls that were done and first i would go to the last um page of that because at the end it terminates itself so it might uh, do the most interesting stuff right before that which would be some kind of uh, run PE process injection stuff so let's take a look oh I don't okay there's not so much interesting but here it is NT write virtual memory and that's something we could try to breakpoint on. So we see it's um, using that to maybe, uh, let's take a look at the process injection part. So it could do one of those. It's probably create process because it creates its own process um in suspended mode most likely 
then it will use one of those uh, to go the path with write process memory or this path with write process memory and then uh, we didn't see create remotes, right? So it's most likely this path that's been taken right here, which would be a pretty classic run PE or process following um, using this path in the process injection chart. So, okay, now that helps. That helps because we now, now we know what we can do. Uh, let's make this an executable. Also, I have Open Process Explorer, so we can uh, monitor what's going on in the processes and see if it creates other processes. And so, um, I will be using x64 dbg, or in this case, x32 dbg, because it's a 32-bit executable. And we are at the entry point. If you are not at the entry point, you should set your preferences to only um, break on entry breakpoint right here. And then um, as soon as you load the file, it will break at the entry point of the file. So what are we going to do? We want to break on write process memory. So, uh, ah, yeah, you open this window with um, um, CTRL and G. So you can enter that and now you can breakpoint this. I think I already made a breakpoint on that whilst I uh, tested this unpacking. Okay. And the other one is um, on anti resume thread in case so you know if you have gotten too far if you ran too far then the um the program terminates so uh this is also interesting so here should be a breakpoint okay and it's time to run the sample so i simply hit run and we see where we are then now, what you need to know about this API, right? Process, let's check this out, right? Process memory function that's here. Take a look at this. Um, it takes um, a number of parameters. And the third one is a buffer, and that's the part we're interested in. So that's the pointer to the buffer that contains data to be written to the address space of the specified process. So it will call this and the um, stuff that should be written to the other process is in that buffer. And that's what we want to have. Uh, so it's the third uh, parameter here on the stack. You just count one, two, three. Then you say follow the word and dump. And that is kind of weird. Um, you see, it doesn't start with a PE or something, but here's a section table below. And if you scroll up, you can see there is the um, the PE header, or the, the part of the PE header that's missing. So it seems it um, does not copy that part. It copies only uh, the lower contents because the upper contents, the the step and so on, of the the MS DOS step, it's already in the process in the target process, so it doesn't need to copy that as well or write that to the target process as well. But it's good that it's there, so we can just copy this from the um, from the RAM. <coughs> now open up HXD. And um, that's the address. We should take note of the address here, 4D93EC. And we go to this um, memory symbol and the lower sample.exe, the, the upper one is the one that is currently um, being injected into. You can see that it's gray 
Gray means it's in suspended mode. So it's in, in the mode where it's ready to, for the code to be injected there. And we want to look into the, the, this sample right here, the, the one that's not in suspended mode, because that contains the buffer with the contents. The contents have not yet been written to the target process. Uh, they are still in, in there. So let's take this one. If you take the wrong one, you, you will uh, see that. So um, go to, and now I forgot the address, 4D93EC, 4D93EC. And here we are, that looks like it's the right location. And now I just copy a large area. Um, I don't know how, how large this PE image is, so I just choose something to work with and see if it's enough afterwards. Maybe a bit more, I don't know. Oh no, don't do that, please. Um, it's too much, yeah. Okay, we just uh, copy that. It says it's not possible because part is undefined. That's because of this area here. So I should not go um, over this area, which is the end is um, this um, for f6 fff. Okay, for f6. Ah, oh, come on. For f6 fff. So that's the end of this memory area. So we can now copy that with, um, yeah, like that, and um, make a new file. And now paste, yes. And we save that on the desktop as dump. Save. Now, how do we know that we copied enough just put the sample into any the dump into a um, PE analyzer like Podix Analyzer or PE Studio and see if there is an overlay. If there's an overlay, you have done it well. You have done everything well. You have copied enough. So overlay means that this part of the file is not part of the PE and you copied too much. And copying too much is exactly what you can do it's not hurting anything so and here we see the the blue part that's the overlay so that's part of the memory that's not part of the p file which is uh, what we dumped right here also what you can see now there's not this uh, any bright area anymore i mean there's a small bright area anymore but like small doses it's harmless so it looks like this isn't packed anymore and that we unpacked the sample that's great. And uh, at this point I will stop to uh, analyze. We will publish in the next videos of full analysis of this sample. And I hope to see you soon at Malware Barker's channel. Yeah, bye bye. Thanks for watching.